I just came back from Costa Mesa, California, where I was keynoting a speech for the Los Angeles chapter of the National Tooling Manufacturers Association. Uh, and uh, that's not important other than the fact that I'm bragging about being, you know, a professional speaker. But anyway, uh, Saturday night, the night before my talk, I was, I was having dinner. Actually, my daughter, my way above average daughter, Kelly, and I were having dinner with Mark Osterstock and his wife, Vicki. Uh, Mark is the CEO of QMark Incorporated, a manufacturing company out of Orange County. And uh, he was the guy who was responsible for bringing me in to speak at the conference. So first of all, a big shout out to Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. I really appreciate you uh, uh, bringing me in down there. But we got to talking about golf uh, because those of you that follow me, you know that my daughter is big time in golf. She works at Callaway. Uh, golf company right now. Uh, she was a D1 golfer, got a scholarship to college, all that stuff. She was a very, very good golfer. Back in the day, I was a pretty good golfer myself. But when you're a when you, when you're an avid golfer, you, there are golf courses. You, you just want to play the, the greatest golf courses in the world. And as uh, as I was getting older, there was one golf course that I always wanted to play. Uh, the number one rated golf course in the U.S., I believe oftentimes rated number one in the world, called Pine Valley Country Club, uh, located in Clementon, New Jersey. And I had been, I had played pretty much all the other great golf courses in the U.S., but I had, had, had not been able to get on Pine Valley because it was just next to impossible to play there. Uh, super exclusive club. Um, they don't have big tournaments there because they just don't care. But it's the best golf course. So anyway, I, I, uh, I happened to finally get out there. And the way it happened was that I was facilitating a meeting, a board of directors meeting for the National Housewares Manufacturers Association, NHMA at that time. It's now the International Housewares. Uh, but, uh, and I'm facilitating this and most of the people on the board of directors are CEOs of big companies and successful and stuff. Uh, and during a break in the day, I'm standing at one end of the room talking to somebody and all the way at the other end of the room, I hear the words Pine Valley. My ears perk up and I immediately see who's talking back over there in the corner and I beeline right back there to them and I see these two gentlemen are talking and I said, uh, did I hear the, the words Pine Valley back here? And one of them looks at me and he goes, yeah, I'm a member at Pine Valley. And I said, I said, well, I, you know, I'm an avid golfer. I love to play golf. I said, and I have always wanted to play Pine Valley. If you ever have an opening uh, and you just need to find somebody for an opening, call me. I will drop everything, <laughs> cancel everything, drop everything to be there to play Pine Valley. And he laughed and he said, oh, okay, I'll keep that in mind. And it was only about two months later when I get a phone call and he says, hey, guess what? Uh, I've got an opening if you'd like to come and join us. And I'm like, Absolutely. I will be there, w w you know, when blah, blah, blah. Well, it turned out that it was a group of uh, 12 guys that he would bring together every year and uh, they would be there for uh, four days of golf at Pine Valley. And as it turned out, somebody dropped out. He plugged me in, and so for for several years, I went back to Pine Valley every year for four days of, of playing golf. So that was an amazing experience, and playing Pine Valley was awesome. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is that this is a very important marketing message lesson. Now, if you have read my book, uh, you know the you know uncopyable, how to, how to create an unfair advantage over your over your competition, then you know that in chapter. Two, I talk about the marketing diamond, and here's the picture of the marketing diamond uh, in chapter two. And at the and we and we, when you start at the at the marketing diamond, this is the way uh, uh, we have to think about developing our marketing strategy. And um, most companies think about it backwards. They think about the tools first. They think about the media. They go, oh, we have to go on social media. We got to we got to get we got to get on LinkedIn. We got to go on Instagram. I hear Instagram is hot. No, no, no. Number one is you start with your with who your target market is. Right? Who's your market? And then the second step is what's the message to that market? So it's like it's like I say that your market, I call them your moose. And your moose are that's who you're trying to get. And the message you're trying to send to the moose is moose bait. 
uh, that attracts their attention. Now, th this is not something I haven't talked about before, but here's, here's what's so critically important and why it's important that you come up with a message with bait that the moose wants to hear. And what the, and the best message that you can send out to anybody is a message that joins them in the conversation that's already going on in their mind. See, instead of us just trying to sell something to somebody and we're just announcing what we're, to, what, what we have to sell and then hoping that somebody will buy it from us, the best way is to understand what what problem, what challenge, what uh, aspiration do we solve? Do we help that person solve or achieve that they are already thinking about? If they're waking up in the morning and they're thinking about, hey, uh, um, I've got this problem, right? And then they are reading uh, headlines, subject lines. They're seeing ads in magazines. They're, you know, messages that are coming around. And all of a sudden, one of those messages says, hey, do you have this problem? Uh, and if, they, if it's already in their mind, they will see that. And they will go, yes, I have this problem. Are you going to help me with that? See, this is exactly like what I'm talking about when I was referring to Pine Valley. See, Pine Valley was always in my mind because it was, it was a place that I wanted, I desperately wanted to play that golf course because I'd heard so much about it. And so it was in my mind. It was the conversation already going on in my mind to the point where when I heard the words Pine Valley down at the other end of the room, you know, and probably nobody else in the room heard, heard those words except me. But I was clear across the room and I heard somebody say Pine Valley. And I immediately you know, just took off right down there and, and started that conversation with him. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to achieve is joining the conversation that's going on in the customer's mind. Now, let me just, let me just help you uh, also realize something, learn something. I want to tell you about a book. It's called the Robert Collier Letter Book. Now, obviously, I want you to get my book. As, as well. But this is a book, and I'm not even sure when it was first written or when it was first published. Let me see if I can find find what it says here. It says, um, uh, da, da, copyright 1937. 1937. But this is all about how to write sales copy. And it's, uh, it's awesome. And in the very, very first chapter, here's what Robert Collier says. He says, the ultimate purpose for every, and he's talking about business letters, because this is back in the days, you know, when they had to mail stuff out all the time, right? And you know, he said, but the very, but, but, but we're, we're talking about the message now, right? The, the ultimate purpose of every business letter simmers down to this. The reader of the letter wants certain things. The desire for them is consciously or unconsciously the dominant idea in his mind all the time. You know, and you want him to do something, right? So how can you how can you tie this thing up that he wants in such a way that doing it will bring him a step nearer to his goal? And he says, put yourself in his place. If you're deep in discussion with a friend over a matter that it means a great deal to both of you, you know, then that's th then then that's what you're interested in. If you if somebody comes up to you and starts talking to you about something that you're not interested in, you're not interested in it, right? You know, he says, you know. He is deep in a discussion with himself over ways and means of getting certain things that mean a great deal to him. You know, so so uh, if he were talking to someone, you'd listen for a while, like I did, right? You know, and you would get the trend of a conversation. You would hear what they're talking about, and then you would join the conversation, right? So again, you're joining the conversation that goes on in their minds. There are certain prime human emotions in which the thoughts of all of us are occupied a goodly part of the time. Tune in on them, he says, and you have your reader's attention. Tie it to the thing you have to offer, and you are sure to get his interest. You want to learn more about sales copy? Get the Robert Collier letter book. It's fantastic. It's long, but it's got all kinds of great information in there. Pine Valley. Join the conversation that's going on in your prospect's mind, and you will get his or her attention. This is Steve Miller, better known as Kelly's Data Marketing Gunslinger. Thanks for joining me again this week on my uncopyable business video. Uh, I will be back again next week. In the meantime, always remember, be uncopyable. See ya.